Today I want to take a look at some awesome chord progressions from the Deer Hunter. Before I get into the video, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell notification. I've got all sorts of videos coming soon. If you're a fan of Prague, you're not going to want to miss any of this stuff. If you haven't checked out the Deer Hunter before, I'd recommend going and doing that now. The Deer Hunter makes some of the most ambitious, unique, and catchy prog rock out there. There's lots of cool chord progressions in the Deer Hunter's music, but I want to take a look at one song in particular. This is the song, Is There Anybody Here, off of Act 4, Rebirth and Reprise from 2015. The majority of this song is in B flat minor, which is a really bad guitar key, but it's a great sounding key for this song. We start with the verse kicking in right away. Here the piano plays quarter notes and the chords are changing once per measure. I lay my body down To rest my weary head I think I left someone myself for dead. This might seem like a lot of chords, but it's really just a two chord vamp with some slight variations. First we have a B flat minor, which is B flat, D flat, and F. To get our second chord, a B flat diminished, we're going to lower the fifth F down a half step to F flat. I'll probably call this E because that's a little more common, but theoretically it's actually an F flat. And this idea is called a line cliche, where we're moving one note up or down chromatically while the chord below stays the same. You're probably familiar with that sound. To turn this chord into a diminished seventh, you'd put a G on top. And that's going to happen later, but really at the beginning you just have B flat minor to B flat diminished. This is a pretty simple chord progression, but the dark sound of that diminished chord really adds to the moody vibe here. The next two chords are B flat minor and C7. C7 is C, E, G, and B flat. There's only one note different between that C7 chord and the B flat diminished 7 chord from earlier, which is B flat, D flat, E, and G. The difference being the C in the C7 chord and the D flat in the B flat diminished 7 chord. These two chords are functioning the same way here. You still get the note F moving down to E. But the C7 has a slightly less dissonant sound to it. That in combination with the bass note moving up to C gives a brighter variation on this two chord vamp. This C7 chord could also be looked at as a five of five or a secondary dominant chord. In traditional theory, your secondary dominant would resolve to the dominant chord, the five chord, in this case F. And then that would go back to your tonic chord of B flat minor. Now in this song, this chord never actually goes to the dominant chord, so that might not be the best explanation. But this is a pretty common chord if you want to get outside of the key signature. The fifth chord in the verse is a D flat major. This is the relative major chord of B flat minor, and it's functioning in the same way, except once again with a brighter sound. It's all these tiny variations in the chords that are keeping this progression from sounding too static. Is there anybody The chorus deals mostly with diatonic chords from B flat minor. It starts on the four chord E flat minor. This helps to make it sound different from the verses which are very much rooted on the B flat minor chord. So we have E flat minor, A flat, B flat minor, and F minor. These are all diatonic chords from B flat minor. The second half we bring back the C7 chord. This is kind of the defining sound of this song, is this C7 chord.
There's a cool transition chord progression that happens after the first chorus. This happens once later in the tune as well. It's a couple of major chords, so D flat, F, and B. What you really have here is a five chord, F, moving a tritone away to a B major chord. Tritone substitution is a jazz concept where you replace the five chord, F, with a five chord, a tritone away, B. So this B chord is really just a more harmonically rich way to move back to our tonic chord of B flat minor. Also gives you some nice chromatic movement. Verse two is the same as verse one, but here we get the note G in the bass of these B flat diminished seven chords. You could just call this a G diminished seventh chord because diminished seven chords are symmetrical. This is happening in this cool guitar and bass riff. There's that note G. And this change in root note is really just adding to the extra dynamics that are happening here in the second verse. After a short and second chorus, we move to my favorite part of the song, which I'm going to call the bridge. Here we move to the relative major key of D flat. First we have a D flat major, then a B flat minor, then our C7 chord again, and then the most interesting chord of the whole song, a B6 or C flat 6 depending on what you want to call it. I'm also thinking of this as a G sharp minor with B in the bass. This is similar to the B chord from the transition section we looked at earlier. To me, this chord works really well because of the chromatic movement. So we have chromatic movement in the bass, going from C to B. But you also have chromatic movement in the inner voices. A B flat would move up to B, E would move down to D sharp, and G would move up to G sharp. So. Chromatic movement is incredibly strong, and it's a really effective way of finding some unique sounding chords. You could also think of this chord as being borrowed from the parallel minor key of D flat or C sharp minor. Moving to a parallel key means you're moving to a key that shares the same root note as the key you're in. In this case, we're in D flat or C sharp major, so I can borrow this chord from the key of D flat or C sharp minor. The song ends with a really awesome long guitar solo, just going between B flat minor and B flat diminished like the verse progression. And this is probably the best Deer Hunter guitar solo. All sorts of cool licks in here. I'd recommend checking them out for yourself. But this is a really fun progression to just jam on too. I'll probably do a lot of bluesy ideas over the minor chord and then when the diminished chord hits, I'm gonna make sure to kind of nail that flat five and some of the diminished sounds there too. over that progression all day, it's super fun. So there you have it, some awesome chord progressions from the Deer Hunter. Most of these ideas are pretty simple, but they're all super useful. If you can reach outside of diatonic chord progressions, you can add so much color to your music. As always, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, hit the bell notification, like, comment, share. Till next time, stay proggy.